Hey, what's up guys? This is David from Common RDW here, and welcome to a video where I just want to talk to you guys about my time and my thoughts on what should have been the latest, biggest release for Xbox gamers, uh, for people that have access to Game Pass, for people that like Bethesda Arcane Works games. Um, this, this should have been a big one, but uh, I wanted to make this video to kind of give you guys my thoughts on it and also let y'all know um, if I think it's worth checking out still. Uh, I just wanted to put my like couple cents out here since it is one of the bigger releases of the year that everyone at least anticipated and since I got some time with it I wanted to put out a video put my thoughts out there so you guys can kind of see where I'm at in case you guys maybe wanted to check it out but you wanted someone's thoughts on it um, and also just to like you know just get just get a video out there man I'm, just, I'm trying to get better with getting videos out where I'm just kind of loosely talking about games that I've been playing on a specific subject matter or whether it's video games or anime or more other things down the line but I want to get better with making these type of videos for you guys where I'm more like talking to you rather than reading a script and like going off the cuff like that so we're gonna have some gameplay overlaid here all the gameplay you're seeing on screen has been captured on my um, Elgato 4k 60 Pro and also captured from my Xbox Series X so I am using the stronger of the Xboxes, um, however my display doesn't really capture 4K gameplay. So I am playing the game at 1440p um, at like 120 hertz. So, and we all know the game is capped at 30 at launch. So that's what, that's what I'm looking at here. That's what you're going to be seeing on screen just so you know like where we're at graphically in terms of the gameplay that's going to be on screen. So let's talk about Redfall here. So. I honestly have not been keeping that big of an eye on this specific game. Um, I like games where we're fighting like the paranormal, we're fighting horror creatures, like I love Dead Island, I like Dying Light specifically, I like Dying Light more than Dead Island personally, uh, but Dying Light 2 was really good, um, I do enjoy like Back for Blood, I've played that. Uh, Left 4 Dead, obviously, like a classic and all that type of stuff. And um, I'm not big on like scary horror games, but this is more like in the action realm of things for me. So it's not really like a big issue of like whether or not the game freaks me out. But um, I do like games where we are like fighting zombies, fighting, in this case, vampires, or just fighting waves of like horror creatures and stuff like that. So initially when this game was shown off um, a couple years back, this game's been cooking for a minute, but we started really getting a lot of information, I think, last year. Um, it looked like it was going to be a Left 4 Dead-like type of game, considering we just got Back 4 Blood not too long ago, and that dead ass was a Left 4 Dead-like game. Uh, same team and everything. I, I didn't know how to feel about playing a game where it's, again, grab your friends and kill these monsters. But this one, honestly, I have to get my hands on it. It's, it feels more like a Far Cry with a horror spin on it. And that's, that's what I have to compare it to. It, it plays more like Far Cry at its base. But also the game kind of feels dated as if this is not more like Far Cry 6. This is more like Far Cry pff, like 4, like in that time frame. It feel, this game feels like it was made in the PS4, Xbox One era. In terms of like graphically, the game doesn't look as well as I would hope it would look on my Xbox Series X. Um, comparatively to other games that recently have released, like it just doesn't look that good. Even Deathloop, another game made by Arcane that I played on both my like, PlayStation 5 and my PC, which doesn't have like the greatest graphics card, but it can get the job done. It looks worse than like Deathloop on my computer, which I'm very surprised about. And also it seems like the like the love and the effort for quality design and in terms of just like interesting mechanics all it seems like that's not really in Redfall as much as I would have thought it would be like it feel like I said it feels like a game from last gen it feels a little dated and that's coincidental considering that we just got Dead Island 2 which some people have said is yeah this game feels like it's a better version of a game that came out give or take like eight ten years ago right so it's it, it i wish that the game felt better up front aesthetically in trailers the game looks phenomenal like if the game looked that well that it does in the trailers in the actual gameplay i'd be a little bit more all over it because then it feel like we were making like a jump in 
like game feel up front, you know, but it feels like we're we've regressed a little bit in terms of how this game feels. But also that could be a Bethesda thing. I personally like don't play a lot of Bethesda games. Uh, and even like, for example, Deathloop, it did feel like it kind of had a little bit of a dated um, UI going on there. But I don't know, that's just like a personal thing for me, since I'm not really too big into this type of like this, this company's, this development team's games, you know. Um, but let's talk more about like how the game feels, right? So, De so Redfall is a game where it's just literally, like I said, it feels like a Far Cry, where you're going, you're getting dropped into this map. You can play as four different characters, so your playthrough might feel a little bit different up front, like for the first hour, because you're getting some things that are contextual to your specific character. I picked Layla, the black girl who has like those psychic powers so she has like a umbrella that can deflect bullets and then like push the psychic energy of the umbrella towards enemies so it kind of like a shockwave attack and then she also has like this telekinesis lift which is kind of like a boost jump thing um and it's all right like it's nothing super insane um but it's, it's it has its utility you know um there's a skill tree involved so as you're playing the game you're leveling up your character it takes a while to level up and as you level up you get skill points which you can use to um upgrade your skills so like your umbrella ability can take damage and then the damage that's done to the umbrella you get that back as like bullets so you can actually get bullets by playing defensively and then also like your lift ability can last around longer so you can have more access to it or it can um, push you farther or if you're like standing on it you can do more damage while you're standing on it all right those type of things it seems like it would be cooler if you had like more of those passive abilities up front instead of unlocking them and then i don't know man this this game is so this game is in a weird space because I just feel like it could be more than what it is. It feels a little basic for the type of game that it actually is. And the fact that you're supposed to, or at least one of the bigger selling points is it wants you to play with friends. That's also something that I didn't really have that much fun with. So I played up for about like an hour and a half with a friend uh, not too long ago. And... The game is also just like a, a, it has, it has its messes, it has its bugs. So I had one moment when I was playing with Layla and her umbrella ability deployed so I could block bullets, but then it wasn't going back, it wasn't turning off. So I just like had my umbrella out for like a whole minute and I couldn't put the umbrella back. So I was just like in an awkward space. I was getting shot. I couldn't do anything about it. So that was one bug. And then when I was playing with a friend, we ran into uh, these cultists on the road in this area, so we were fighting them, and then usually when you find cultists, there's like the vampires, right? And we started shooting the vampire, the vampire's health's going down, it gets like its last tick of health. And then, the vampire wouldn't die. Like, it was just, had it had a magic pixel, and we were shooting it with shotguns, we were shooting it with pistols, doing all sorts of stuff, and it was just not dying, so it was immortal. And now we just have a, a not, an undying vampire, around aggroed on us so we had to like run away so that was annoying and then also we were doing like a mission where we had to go to a movie theater to get a popcorn machine because why not right so we're in the movie theater no knowledge of this prior there's just a random world boss in there full ass health bar and without even like giving us a description of like who the enemy is um just it just started happening all of a sudden like the pov of our character starts getting blacked out around like this the the boss character so they can like black out the area then there's this like red mist that's around so if you're walking into the red mist you take damage so not only were we not able to see anything we also were taking damage from this red mist and also the boss character also had like this shield that was rotating around it so we couldn't even hit her all the time so that was and also what really annoyed me about this fight is we aggroed the boss and there was no health bar above the boss's head all the time so we didn't even know where she was so we were so she was like going into her like fog of war that she made and then we would have to like go in there and look for her because that was the only way to like reveal more of the map 
and then we were taking damage from the toxic gas because she was like floating above the toxic gas. So that was just a bad, a bad boss fight encounter. I really didn't like that. And it was, the game just feels real jank. Also, given that when you're playing with your friends, um, even though this game has a story progression, it's like it wants you to play specifically always with a friend because your data in story progression does not carry to your world if you jump into a friend's. So you'll still get like your levels and stuff and th everything else will progress except for your story. So unless you're literally only playing with like one specific group of people every time everyone plays, um, you're going to miss out on story beats and then you're going to have to go back into your world and say you just want to play by yourself for a while. You have to do all of this stuff all over again. And it's like, why in 2023 is this how games are being designed? Like you think this would be fixed up front and then that given the additional like pain of not being able to play the game in full 60 fps which personally like i grew up playing nintendo games and i all i grew up playing like games on av cables dated sentence until like mid to, like 2010 so i don't really care too much about graphics that much but it's like in 2023 when i'm playing on an xbox series x i want this game to look freaking beautiful and Redfall doesn't really look that good, un unfortunate enough to say. So, that's annoying. And I think it was just the combination of the game feeling really dated, the gameplay not feeling super remarkable, the vampires being just vampires, and it doesn't really seem like they do too much extra. The AI is also really dumb. Like, the, the AI does this game thing where you will be crouched, and you're prone, like you're crouched, right? And as you're crouched, they, they can't really detect you that well because you're not making noise when you're running, I guess. But it's so, like, not modern day stealth where it's like, it can be very much cheesed. Like, there's an enemy standing by a door not looking at you. You're crouched, you're moving all around behind them and they don't hear you. But as soon as you stand up, that's when they feel like, oh, I hear something. Then they turn around and that triggers them. But it's like, you can pretty much literally, as long as you're crouched, you can just move up to them. And then you just knock them with your elbow. There's not even any cool kill animations. At least Deathloop had cool assassination animations. This game doesn't even have that. So I'm really surprised about that fact. But I don't know. I, I, I played it. I gave it about three hours of my time. And I decided to uninstall it on my Xbox Series X. And I also had it on my computer. I also uninstalled it on that. And yeah, it's we're at a point now where there's so many games coming out. If a game doesn't hit for you within the first couple hours, you might as well uninstall it. Like, there, there's no... There's so many games being added to my backlog actively that I don't, I don't have enough time to care to try to give enough time into a game that I'm personally not invested in. So I'm just going to keep it moving. So Redfall, if I had to give it a numerical rating for those of you who want it, I give it a, a 6. I give it a 5.5 or a 6. A solid 6. Like a high 5, low 6. It's, it's, it's very eh. Maybe over time it can get cyberpunked or um, No Man's Sky and get improved. And then I maybe want to go back to it, but... As of right now, I'm I'm fine on passing on this. It's a shame because it was one of like the next big titles Xbox was going to get. Um, but there's still some other potential for games coming out soon. There's an Xbox showcase happening very, very soon. So we might get their Hail Mary trump card of having Silk Song in the wings or something like that. So we'll see. But yeah, that's it for me, guys. I just wanted to uh, share my thoughts on Redfall get a video out there and let y'all know what I think in case you guys wanted to hear some more opinions on how Redfall actually plays uh, by the opinion of someone who gave it a chance, didn't like it too much, and I'm going to keep it moving. So uh, that's all for me. Thank you so much for listening, y'all. If you like this video, be sure to comment down below what you think of Redfall and also like and subscribe over here on YouTube and follow me on Twitch for awesome gameplay and other thoughts on games in the future. I'll talk to y'all later now. Bye.